What up, it's Shrinkster94, and welcome to my second playthrough of Resident Evil Code Veronica X. This is also going to be the final playthrough. So, I actually have a few things to say before I begin this playthrough. So, if you are impatient and don't want to hear all of this, I implore you to follow the time code that I have provided on the screen right here. Alright? So, first of all, my original plan was to only do one playthrough, and hopefully get the A rank in it, and if I didn't, I would have done the A-rank thing off-camera. But as I played the game in the first playthrough, I realized that there were more variable events than I at first thought. So I decided near the end of the first playthrough that I would go ahead and do a second one, especially if I didn't get the A-rank. I was gonna make the second playthrough my A-rank attempt, but also trigger different events if I could. Now, here's the thing. I discovered the unfortunate fact that the A rank not only depends on your final time, your amount of saves, and the amount of retries, as well as your first aid spray usage, but it turns out you gain extra points within the rank if you trigger two specific events within the game. And those two events are specifically when Steve is trapped after getting the gold Lugers, um, you get extra points if you save him really fast. You get no points if you take an average amount of time, and it actually deducts points if you take a long time. So, in order to get those extra points, I'm going to have to keep that event the same and save him very fast. The other event that affects the rank is whether or not you give Rodrigo the hemostat. So in the first playthrough, I did give him the hemostat, so I got those extra points, but my time was horrible, so that's why I didn't get the A rank. So for this playthrough, I was not going to give him the hemostat, I was going to skip that thing altogether, but if I do that, I get an insane amount of points deducted from my rank. So I'm going to have to keep that event the same as well. However, there are a couple events that I can do differently in this playthrough. One, for example, is, I think I explained this in either the prologue or the first playthrough, but when you take control of Steve, the amount of enemies you defeat with him will decide how the cutscene plays out at the end of it. Um, in the first playthrough, I defeated all of the enemies. In this playthrough, since we're trying to be fast and all, I'm gonna actually skip all the enemies and leave them all for Claire to deal with. So here's my point to all of this. This playthrough was meant to trigger different events as well as go for an A rank, but because of the rank requirements, I'm going to have to keep some events the same. And then, turns out, I got a few very observant subscribers out there who have taken it upon themselves to let me know all that I have missed throughout my first playthrough. So, I really appreciate them doing that. So for this playthrough, I'm going to try my best to show all of the stuff that I may have missed in the first playthrough that will give me less to do in the epilogue and bonus video. It's primarily just a bunch of ammo that I may have missed in certain spots, but a more important one happens to be a file that I forgot. Also, there was this one map that I just could not figure out how to get. It was like the statue that I had to push into a specific spot. And for some reason, I could not think of that at the time I was doing it. But as I was editing that part, happened, I remembered right off the spot. So I don't know what was wrong with me. But anyway, this playthrough is a true A-rank attempt and doing all of the necessary requirements. And I will change some events, but not all that I could change. And I'm also going to try to pick up things that I may have missed in the first playthrough all in all, this is going to be an A rank attempt run, alright? So without further ado, I mean that was a lot of talking. If you're still here, I commend your patience. <laughs> so let's, let's go ahead and get started with the second playthrough of Resident Evil Code Veronica X. Resident Evil. Alright. And I'm going to skip all of the cutscenes that we've seen already, and all the door animations that we've seen already. Okay, so... Now let me grab this knife. Okay, so here's the thing. Since I'm doing everything possible that I can to get an A rank, I am actually going to go through this whole playthrough with the infinite herb. So... If you guys hate me for that, 
Well, that's your prerogative. I'm still gonna do it. We're not saving at all, so no ink ribbons I need to pick up. Hopefully I don't die in this playthrough. We'll see what happens. I'm sorry if in that first part it seemed like I was screaming. <laughs> Get off! Are you serious right now? So because I'm very focused on speeding through this, I'm probably not going to talk a lot. And all files that I've gotten in the first playthrough, I'm going to skip. There's only one file that I apparently missed in the first playthrough. Now this isn't necessarily a speed run, so it's not like I'm gonna skip a whole bunch of areas or anything like that. God damn it. Okay. Deposit any metallic items you have in the security box. Alright, let's do this carefully. Alright, I believe it's like that. Okay. Crap. Where's the other herb? Oh, I fucking forgot to pick it up. Okay. <clears throat> um, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna freak out right now. Whatever. A double herb is better than a single herb. Alrighty then. Ah, well now I can show you guys sealing the windows before the zombies come out of it.
Please deposit any metallic uh. items you have in the security box. Alright, better not forget that extinguisher this time. Alright, so now is the time to trigger the alarm to prevent them from coming out. Please deposit any metallic items you have in the security box. <laughs> Not burst through. Please deposit any metallic items you have in the security box. Alright, from here.
here on out and play a little more reasonably. With that infinite herb, I'm gonna show a little thing that could happen here. serve ammo. Alright, we're gonna go ahead and pick this up right away. So this is an event that we can change from the first playthrough. NTCO394? I believe so. Yes. Alright, I need to get some space first before go anywhere. Alright, store those, store the knife, store the extinguisher, and we're good. Actually, and I'm gonna store the proof, of course, too. Don't need that for a while. Actually, considering I can use it when I go to that one spot, I'll go ahead and take it. and here for explosive bowgun arrows when I get the walk pick since I'm saving Rodrigo and there's handgun ammo in here that I missed in the first playthrough so even though I have an infinite herb I'm not gonna like completely just I'm not going to overuse it and play this game as if I have infinite health. I could skip all of these enemies if I want. It would be faster, but I don't want to exploit it that much. So I'm still going to play the game normally. It's just I'm going to use this for every time that I need to heal. Oh, forgot about that one.
Oh yeah, there's a red herb. Oh, it doesn't matter though, I have infinite ammo. <laughs> We gotta be fast about this. Alrighty then. Okay, I just realized that when I switch to Chris, I'm not gonna have those herbs. I may not have those herbs on me anymore. So I better take collect some throughout this playthrough. Alright, but space is still going to be an issue, it seems. I would much rather have that kind of herb, but... Whatever. So the reason I'm still taking the maps is because I think there's extra points if you gather all of the maps. And I didn't get that in the last one simply because I could not remember how to get that one map from the statue.
Come on, get the bow gun. Save a bit of ammo there. you off. Still alive? Yeah, stay down, bitch. All right, is there more bowgun errors on this body? So, wow, there is. All right, so far, Marat, you've been right in every spot. 